This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to inthemoneystocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 2722, show number 364. So the markets are looking up a little today, Nick. Yeah, we got a little bit of an uptick here to start the day. It's been a bit choppy, but that's to be expected. This is the kind of market where you have a lot of volatility, a lot of choppiness. This is just that type of environment. So you have to be a little bit selective at this time. But I have to say, um, right now, the markets are holding up pretty well as we speak. Uh, so bond yields, they're heading higher. The question, the big question in everybody's mind, uh, everyone who doesn't buy the, uh, the propaganda, is can the market withstand higher rates and can the economy withstand higher rates? Well, that's the million-dollar question. I happen to think no is the answer. But, um, you know, a lot of people will come out and say, hey, if, you know, yields just go up gradually, the market will adjust. Uh, inflation is good for stocks. Other people will say, um, you know, the U.S. will not be able to handle its debt. We're now over 30 trillion. Yields go up. That's going to be more debt to pay out. So there's some um, a, a lot of rhetoric one way or the other. That's why I have to use charts because I can't tell you what the story is going to be. I, I never know. But I honestly don't think that the market can handle higher yields for one reason. It's been on a liquidity-fed system for ages now. I mean, you can make a case going back to 2009 that QE brought us uh, this, this big rise in the stock market, and now if they're not going to do QE, how is the stock market going to go up? All of a sudden, it's just better. Things are just better. If you go back to December of 2018, when the market dropped 20%, the Fed had to cut rates three times and implement $120 billion worth of buying every month. I mean, we've been on that system. So now all of a sudden we're going to get off and we're going to raise rates and things are going to be fine. Uh, I, don't, I don't see that. Well, that's why we need to pass a build better broke. Yeah, well, I think we've been passing build better broke for a while now. You can even... You can even go back to the last administration. We were starting to do that. See where that's gotten us. So housing stocks. So if there's any stock that really is going to be interest rate sensitive, it's going to be these housing stocks, right? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And if you take a look at the housing stocks this past Friday, they just got walloped. I mean, Toll Brothers, Lennar, you name it, they were down. And if you want to just track the whole industry group, just go to the ITB, which is the iShares uh, Home Construction ETF, and, and that was absolutely hammered as well. So you got to be careful. Today, yields are backing off a little bit. The 10-year, as we speak, is, is down about a half basis point. But, I mean, these things are roaring to go to 2% now. Yeah, it looks like 2% is baked in the cake, doesn't it? I, I, I believe it is. I think we're going to get up there very, very quick. I think uh, we're going to expedite that move. Um, right now we're at, uh, as we speak today, 1.925. So uh, I think 2% is on its way any day now. Look, uh, when you look at uh, the uh, real rate of inflation, and we should specify that as the increase in consumer prices, according to John Williams' shadow stat, and look, it's all about shadowstats.com. It's all about purchasing power, obviously. When we look at that, even if uh, rates go up to 2%, we still got to negative real rates of 12%. So interest rate hikes can't be over by a long shot. I don't think they are. I, I think this is, this is uh, the start of even a, a bigger move, but we're not going to just go up in, in a surge. You're not going to skyrocket higher. What will happen is you'll get to 2%, maybe 2.02% on the 10-year. You'll stall out a little bit there. Everybody, you know, you'll do some backing and filling, then boom, it goes to two and a quarter or 2.3. And then, you know, it'll do some backing and filling, then you go to two and a half. So I, I think that's, you know, we'll, we'll get these little jumps um, steadil steadily. But overall, I mean, if you think about um, where rates were in 2020 after the uh, collapse, I mean, we were under a half, half a point. I mean, it, it's incredible. Now you're at 1.9. 
And, and what's going to happen is people are going to start saying, Hey, I can't afford that, that, you know, that big house anymore. I can't afford uh, that boat or that car. And, you know, that's just a natural progression of things slowing down. So I know historically speaking, yeah, rates are still very low. They're going to remain very low for a long, long time, but it's still a big difference from where you were six months ago or even two years ago. Yeah. Well, my point is it's not going to really do a heck of a lot to contain inflation for a while. It'll be probably a matter of That's years. Right. It That's could right. be three, four years because they'll gradually ratchet them up because the market, they keep saying 50 basis points. Maybe they'll do that to pretend to the market that they're serious about fighting inflation. But these higher rates are going to go on for many years. Well, I, I think I think there's a very good chance of that. And, and inflation just doesn't come overnight and leave overnight it comes and it stays a while so you know if you just go back and look at the paul volcker years when he raised rates uh you know exponentially uh to kill inflation it, it took a while now we have you know even more inflation because we've had shutdowns and and that just amplified things and this is not going to go away anytime soon hey, it's kind of like that uh, brother-in-law that says hey uh Hey, you know, I'm losing my house. I can't afford it anymore. Can I just stay with you for a month? And you say, all right, for a month. And then like you open your eyes and two years later, he's still there with the family and, uh, <laughs> and you just want to throw him out. Yeah. It's like that, uh, old Chevy chase movie, right? The, uh, vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's, what's important to understand about inflation is it's a long term thing. And, Eventually, there's a severe recession that burns it out, and that recession is brought on by extremely high rates, and we got a long ways to go there, which means it's for the time being, it's better to be a borrower than a saver if you can uh, borrow and invest in assets that are going to go up in value and cash flow as a result of inflation. Yeah, it's very true. And it's been that way for a long time. The, the savers have been absolutely destroyed. I mean, it, you know, look at like the mom and pops out there that have been brought up to save their money, put it in a bank account, earn some interest. You get no interest in a bank of bank account. That's why the stock market's so hot, because people could come in and they could earn a, a big return rather quickly. You know, you put your money in a bank. What are you going to get? I, I don't you know, you can put a million dollars in there. You probably generate five hundred dollars a year. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. I saw last month in my uh, Wells Fargo account, I got 15 cents interest. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I mean, it's, it's, so it's, why it's, it's an bother? absolute joke. Why right. do they bother? It, it's an absolute joke. So, <laughs> Well, the one thing you might not know is that if, you're, if you have an account that's non-interest bearing, it doesn't get reported to the government. They don't 1099 it. But if, if you get a nickel of interest... It gets ten ninety nine. Yeah, so I mean, you know, you have to you have to look at these things and and just take it for what it is. I mean, you know, the stock market right now is the is the only game in town. The Fed knows that, and they're walking a fine line right now. They have to try to keep the stock market somewhat buoyant, and they have to try to raise rates at the same time. They're really on a tightrope, and it'll be funny. It'll be interesting. I don't I don't want to say funny. It'll be interesting to see how they can walk it. Yeah, well, I don't see how they can. Uh, like we've said before, they have three functions now. Maintain general price stability. It's difficult in and of itself. Keep employment at optimal levels and never let the stock market go down. That's Those right. are their three functions and they can all be done at once. They were, but uh, then the uh, pandemic changed all that. So let's look at gold futures today. Gold and especially silver catching a bid. Yeah, yeah, you got a nice little pop today in gold futures at the moment. They're up about eight and a half points. And um, again, the the daily chart of of gold futures is actually okay. It, it's hanging in there. It, it's moving up a little bit. The problem with gold overall is the bigger time pattern. Uh, that's still very very weak. So you know, while that can change, you you do need a lot of backing and filling. You need a lot of consolidating. You need uh, a lot more uh, bullish type action to get that really to rev up. I personally think that gold still has one more major leg down, even if we get these minor daily chart bounces, which which we've seen for you know the last 
three months or so, four months or even longer. Um, but overall, you know, we're going to get that major, major opportunity uh, on the next plunge in gold. So, you know, while you have to be patient, you trade around it. And um, but today it's having a very, very solid day. And silver, like you said, is on fire today. So silver has been a little bit of a, of a weak link, uh, a little bit weaker than the gold chart right now. But uh, today it's having a, a really, really good 2% move. And that that's a nice pop. We'll see if it could build on that. My gut feel, like you said, we're going to have a move like we had a couple of weeks ago where gold will look like it's about to break out. Silver will be over 24 bucks an ounce, and then it's going to get slammed. <laughs> well, you can kind of see it. <laughs> that's kind of uh, the way the script is being is being uh, portrayed right now. I'd have to agree with that 100 percent. And I think it's going to you know break everybody's heart once again. Um, but that's okay. It's okay. You, you can, any, anybody holding gold and silver, you're going to get your day in the sun. It's just going to take a little while, but you know, when everybody hates it, that's when you're going to have to step up and love it. But, um, hard to do for most, it's hard to do for most people. It looked like that time was a couple months ago and then it popped and then it started getting a little respect and then right away it slammed down down the drain. Well, I guess we'll leave it at that. Make sure you go over to Nick's site in the money stocks.com. See how he's beaten the average for decades. And while you're at it, the Twitter feeds at ITMS at Nick Santiago zero one at Kerry Lutz emails. Always welcome. KL at Kerry Nick, we will catch up with you on Wednesday. Sounds good.